G'day, today on the bench we've got the JCAR MP3098. Today we're going to build a crowbar circuit for it, explain why a crowbar circuit's important, and also, for some of you who are wondering, we're going to do a test and show how quickly a crowbar circuit will react. We'll show you that on the oscilloscope a bit later on in the video, so stick around, hope you enjoy. A few weeks ago, I made a bodgy perf board version of the crowbar circuit to test it worked for a few weeks before I had the PCBs made. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove that, salvage the components, put them on the PCB, then we're going to test it, and then install it into the power supply. Now you may be wondering why you need a crowbar circuit. Well, if the transistors in your power supply fail short, then you'll have the full voltage at the transformer rectifier section across your radio or device. In this case, this transformer output is around 35 volts. Almost certain to let the magic smoke out of your 12 volt device. Now, we're going to put the components onto this PCB that I made up and had manufactured by JLC PCB. They're not a sponsor of the video, but they're cheap and the results are great. I'll start by disassembling the old thing made on a bit of perf board wrapped in electrical tape. Now I'm going to cut the components off it and reuse them. I'll pop them on the PCB. There's a couple of things about this project I'd like to change. I'd like to use heavier gauge wire. I'd also like to use a 14 volt zener diode rather than a 15 volt zener diode. However, the 15 volt is all I had on hand. It's also within tolerance for the application I need, so I'm not too worried about that. As for the wire gauge, this will be changed at a later date when I recap the power supply in a future video. I'm not too worried for now, as I'm only going to be using this power supply for around 5 amps. Let's connect this to a benchtop power supply and an oscilloscope in order to find out how long this circuit takes to activate, if any time at all. We will do two tests. We'll start with the voltage at 13.8 volts and then crank it up quickly. The next test, what we will do is start the power supply from around 32 volts instantly with no ramp up. Let's see how the circuit copes with these two conditions. In the next example, I'm going to start by ramping the power supply up. So, once we've set the scope up, you'll see that the bench power supply is set for 13.7 volts. You can see that in the top right hand corner. Now what we're going to do is a single trigger, ramping the power supply up over 15 volts. Now as you can see in the statistics here, we can see that the maximum hit 15.679 volts. There's no spike after the power supply was ramped up, it shut off immediately. For the next test, I'm going to start the power supply at zero and immediately switch it on to 32 volts. Watch what happens. You can see where the power supply is turned on, that sharp increase. We can zoom in and see that the maximum was 15.679 volts again. No spike, same as before. This has immediately shorted the power supply's output, which in turn would blow the fuse on the crowbar circuit protecting your device from over voltage and costly damage. Now we're going to install the circuit board inside the power supply which is only going to involve drilling one hole as there's already a free hole there. So I'm going to do the lazy option, just mark it with a sharpie, drill a hole, being careful not to drill through any wires or components on the other side. Then I'm going to put in some plastic standoffs for the board to sit on. It's pretty important that the board doesn't touch anything metal or short against anything else. There can be a lot of current through this. If you think about how the crowbar circuit works, the input and the output are essentially the same. The only difference is the input has a fuse on it. Now what I'm going to do is inject some power from my benchtop power supply into this power supply before we power it on to see if there's any mistakes. I'm going to wind up the voltage and if you carefully watch the meter, you'll see it drop out once it exceeds 15 volts. Based on that result, it's time to plug it in and see if the magic smoke comes out. Mm -hmm. 
some alligator clips would have been handy here. But, as you can see, 13.81 volts. That's pretty good. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. Catch you next time.